Hej och hjärtligt välkomna till H482 och vi har äran idag att ha med oss Jan Eiskens ifrån Antwerpen och Antwerpens universitet och jag ska ställa lite frågor till honom och vi spelar in här i Hindå så jag ska bara meddela att vi har cirka 30 grader varmt. Så om jag snavar på orden och ja, verkar något otydlig så skyller jag i det här fallet på värmen och inget annat. Och jag vill först och främst hälsa Jan hjärtligt välkommen till den här tack, inspelningen. Tack. Eh, och i och med att Jan är, framförallt inte är svenskspråkig så ska vi göra den här intervjun på engelska. För första gången under Youtube-historien med min kanal. Okay. Så so, we'll turn over to English. And I will uh, put a very general question in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make a nice introduction chronological. How you were introduced to the Klein bottle and what struck you in the beginning as being helpful with the Klein bottle? What think, dimensions yep. of it? I think it's now 10 years ago. I gave a lecture in Munich, Germany, about how do we uh, prepare our not falling, our vertical vector. Since on Earth falling is not an option and in astronauts falling is impossible. So that was interesting. And at the end of the lecture, there was a professor, professor um Rapoport who said yes yes it's a climb bottle never heard about a climb bottle so uh, he explained what a climb bottle was and he said that uh, the whole of my, the system i was proposing was in parallel to the concept of a climb bottle now we all went to school most of us <laughs> we learned to think in lines even circles but that that's a bit the end. So the climb bottle is something, it's the non-oriental plane. So this is a plane you have up and down or left and right as you choose. But uh, Felix Klein made out of it a non-oriental plane. So this is how I show it to my actions because I don't have patience, I have actions and I learn them how they can learn themselves to take care of themselves. So, I'll tell it twice. So you turn, you fold it over and then you twist it like that so that one part penetrates the other one and then the inner side becomes the outer side and the outer side becomes the inner side. Ah. Two, now I don't have a plane anymore, I have a volume with a content, but it exists in a context. So it's a volume in an environment, as my body is, as your body is, a volume, three-dimensional, in a content, in a context, a cultural context, a natural context, whatever you want. Now, once more, <laughs> suppose that this is the motor part of the system, then is the other part is the sensory system. That means that if time and space come together, the motor part influences the sensory part and the sensory part influences the motor part. And now we got to something very specific. We have a content. I have too many, don't believe me, too many red uh, blood um, uh, cells in my, in my system and I have less, not enough of something else. That's for medical doctors, for physicians. They speak about the content, but I'm also in a context and the way I use the whole system, ergonomically, if possible, economically, of course, if possible, then there is a relation between what I'm showing you right now the, the movement is influenced by the, um, the data coming out of the movement and it, this uses the climb bottle logic. Let me just explicate uh, one or two things there. The environment goes well with the outside 
Yes. And the body is the inside, the volume. Yes. Yep. Ah, elegant, elegant. So this provides us a very easy way out of the, the Cartesian way, mind oh. body. It's um, a lot of philosophers have tried too, and a colleague of mine, a Dutch um, physiotherapist, but she's got a PhD uh, in France, on, um, and her statement was a PhD in philosophy, and her statement was, I am the body that I have. Mm -hmm. So I thought, so what? Mm -hmm. So I get it, got it a, bit, a step further. I am, I have now the body I have here. So we can in, um, incorp incorporate, yes, time and space. Ah. And so we can understand why some people behave strangely in one environment and not in another or why they do it differently in morning or in the evening mm -hmm. or why on a holiday as I'm right now yeah, I yeah. behave a bit different, you see Lange Jan yeah, <laughs> from yeah. Erland um, it's always different, I don't have to do my best mm. I'm mm. and uh, vacation comes from vacuum and so I'm not full of whatever my, if you want, my content can be let go, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's fantastic because uh, many people felt, uh, especially within uh, cognition science and also philosophy, psychology, we need to get out of the Cartesian yep. dualism. But often those tries has been just a contradiction to dualism and yes. a contradiction to dualism has its fault it mirrors uh, yep. what it's trying to attack so uh, could it be that line bottle could be that unique key that yep. does not put you into that situation of contradicting yep. dualism and doing so. the same stuff all over again. All over again. And ah, to yeah. me just blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And so um, that's why I also like Spinoza mm -hmm. who says uh, the mind doesn't exist, it's another body in our body. Mm. Okay. Oh, oh, now we're talking. Mm. Yes. And so uh, that's also why clock time is different from brain time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. proven by a lot of neuroscientists. Oh, yeah. And so this is how I can show it. There are two um, neurological parts going to the brain, mm -hmm. one to the cortex related to language, and another not going to the cortex, to the midbrain, and rather um, emotions and feelings and so on. And so Wittgenstein, warüber man nicht sprechen kann, warüber soll man schweigen, Schweigen. or something like that. Yes. So we cannot speak about that part because it's not related to the cortex, not to, but it brings us in specific conditions, um, um, in happily conditions or fearful or whatever. And so it's always now. The now is a shift because this now is already different from the now when I spoke out the word for the first time but now, each now is uh, determined by pre and subconscious conditions but happily since clock time is different from brain time there is a 200 millisecond um, time delay and I can let's call it choose to stop what I was already starting so there's no free will but it's free want ah. i can choose to not do something if i'm well aware of myself and i'm aware oh better not to do it or not to do it here not to do it oh now. yeah yeah yeah, and then yeah once more we're in the climb bottle in the space ah. and in the time reference zones that's incredibly elegant solution to the problem yep. wow <laughs> not bad Yep. Could I please borrow that to show to the camera? Yes, of course. Let's see here. Here we have those illustrations. I just see that we get it into the camera. Um, 
Alright, the focus just reset. So here you can see the two varieties. To the left without speak and to the right with speak. Thank you. And how would you put this Klein bottle when it comes to a specific problem like getting out of a situation like an uh, burned out syndrome or pain mm. syndrome? Okay, since we are different from animals and my dog is next to me, the main difference to me is we can choose to prime ourselves let's give a very simple example now say aloud 10 times the word white so white 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 now what drinks a cow and a lot of you will answer immediately milk which is not the case i suppose so that's <laughs> priming we can prime ourselves and the priming most of the time the, the easiest way is to use um images of the future to come I, and that's to fool ourselves to please rather that way than another way and so i made a lot of and i call them eye scans we can scan imagining and visualizing um, bodily functions in order to prime our system uh, in such a way that we will use what I call the system without TVA and not the system with double TVA but I think in Sweden it's called mat moms. 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 moms so you can prime yourself to use your body without mums instead of the useful last useful way for using paying double mums mm, how excellent <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, Jan is often working with metaphors that are very visual and thereby easier for a person maybe suffering from burnout syndrome to yep. understand them because usually words could in this case as I understand it make more harm than good yeah I followed a course in 2000, 2000 in Lapland Finland and on burnout in my thoughts the first one and asked what burns in burnout and they said what a question is this but I think that today we can answer partly because and it's not only the case for let's say burnout but for a lot of other autonomic dysfunctions and you see these are the cards I make to you know, not to explain but to tell to show people how it is well this is a very simple example you know what a cutlet is <laughs> a cutlet a piece of meat has a small redder uh, more red part and a larger let's say less red part these are two types of muscle cells you have fi fiber 1 and fiber 2 fiber types and the fiber 1 types they are used economically because one calorie provides one U whereas the type 2 muscle cells there one calorie only provides 0.8 euro so when it's very important and I do such a movement then I of course will use my type 2 but when I'm lagom <laughs> normally I will only need my type 1s to work except if there's a line coming behind me that there are not that many lines anymore in mm, Sweden no 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 I'm not, not seen one and so that's um, a very easy way to to explain what burns okay we're using energy but uh, once more uh, not in an economical and um, and uh, ergonomic way but we're used to it and once more every movement because we're auto poetic starts with the 
the way you, you, we're used to do it. And mm. so we have to fool ourselves in order to do it differently. And so let's... Uh, could let's, I, could uh, I just borrow that card yep. to show to the camera? And uh, here we see T1 and T2. And T1 is uh, equivalent of the uh, more one. lighter yes. uh, part of the cutlet. And the more redder part is the T2 that uh, digests a lot of sugar. And uh, the, t the type 1 is the slower one. Uh, the more economical one and the type 2 is the uh, quicker one and a lot more sugar de sugar demanding. Yes, and afterwards they will eat more than they burned during their activity. Mm -hmm. So this is also a huge cause of obesity. Oh yeah, uh -huh. so they will signal to the body yep. so half, more sugar. So half women who started to sport they will, in order to lose weight, mm -hmm. they will gain weight. Because of uh, this problem, and yep. you also get the hormones cortisol, noradrenaline, I'm, and adrenaline. I'm not, I'm not a physician. No, no, no. So the content mm -hmm. is for physicians. For physicians, yep. yeah. Mm, very good. Mm. Well, that makes a lot of sense why uh, people who are suffering burnout syndrome are literary actually tired mm -hmm. because their muscles won't provide them with energy enough or force enough no i think the brain calculates that the idea of doing whatever will cost will cost based on bodily data and then the system says don't do it ah there you go ha <laughs> ha that's fantastic these are these questions we've been uh talking about in previous sessions and I also had debate with doctors mm -hmm. about these things and this is the first time we really have some good answers to them because the very very common complaints from people suffering from burnout is tiredness, lack of energy and lack of motivation which is also part of Klein Bottle yeah. because the body is uh, sort of uh, read directly by the mind it's the same thing in a way and it doesn't feel any motivation or intention to do anything and how to get out of this moment 22 well your most of people their bodies are in pieces so I wrote the book and it's called body in peace <laughs> yeah we have it yes <laughs> yeah and um, it's based on Sir Karl Popper's three world model uh, in order to it's not something fallen out of the, the sky um, it's important that in most languages and if I'm correct also in Swedish there's just one word for illness yes we just have quick Sure. That's yeah. it. But in English they have disease, illness and sickness. And most patients are sick three times. It's not only disease, but a lot of patients have... Um, what, what, uh, what did we found in, in your investigation? Well, I don't have that many problems, okay? And so objective um, signs are called disease, subjective illness, and the social part I can't work is rather a sickness you make me sick and tired mm -hmm. is an explanation mm -hmm. in English and so um, we in, in trans communication with um, medical doctors we try to find out how that this specific patient can be helped so we had a field model it was um, published in Dutch uh, 10 years ago where there is a timeline what are the, the the risk factors what is now activating and what are the complaints but in three domains the neuropsychological the somatical part and the musculoskeletal that's the field model for for physicians and then we made the field model and that has been uh, published uh, last year in English, the field model for uh, physiotherapists, 
same horizontal timeline, but now what is local, what is regional, and what is, um, let's say, central or regarding the whole body. And this follows the dual gate theory of pain by Melsack and Wall, one of the most cited articles. And of course, 9 and 9 is 15. If you put both nine fields together, you have a patient that is understood by both and that could be um, could be not treated but could be um, uh, should I say um, explained it using the same um, words, the same concepts mm, and not oh, yeah. one says this and another one says mm -hmm, that so mm -hmm. it seems that they don't know. And then, I'm very sorry, I don't have to explain the word Largo, uh, ah. which is specific, you know, for northern countries and maybe specifically for Sweden, because what we see is that whatever um, approach is uh, provided exercises, that's too much after two, three weeks, this patient stops with their um with their uh, they're not compliant anymore and if they just wait for whatever um and not will, will, are not participating actively it won't change either so from the beginning we say that they are only one percent in our cabinet or practice and that the 99 other percent are the most important so we will teach them how they can teach themselves what to do, what not to do in the time they're at home, at work, wherever. In their activity, in uh, their activity. daily activities. Okay. 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 And also, I was helped a lot by Jörn Heck from the um, Institute of Health in Solna. That's a Swedish, uh, very well known physiotherapist. Uh, uh, no, he's yeah. an, um, if I'm correct, he's an engineer. Oh, he's an engineer? Yes, okay. he's an engineer. And he put on a paper, and much more than that, the Cinderella hypothesis, meaning, and let's do it right now. Just do what I'm going to show you. Lift your arm and keep your arm that way. You're not holding something specific, so it's not a hard exercise. Now keep it that way for 20 minutes, okay? So just keep your arm that way for 20 minutes. And I think that you already will start to feel something that it's no good. Yeah, it's now, strange. keep it that way and I'll show you what to do in a moment. This is what you shall do, but not yet. You have it in this position for one for two seconds and then you put it once more in the same position. Okay, just do it now. And then you feel that after a rest for one or two seconds, we call it a micro pose, it's enough to have a change for the first uh, and that's why it's called the Cinderella fiber the, fir the first muscle fiber that starts the movement continues to work until the whole movement is still is uh, interrupted and this is why since we're still and there's a book the fish in us I think Neil Chubbin a fish swims this way or that way, but there's a part that contracts and a part that releases. Ah. And we're supposed to be upright all day for 16 uninterrupted hours. Oh yeah. I don't think that in non-Western cultures people don't lay down. No, no, Once no. in a while. They do, they do. Okay. They all practice siesta in Eastern Asia and yeah, it's... Uh, uh, uh sort of uh, rest that helps them invigorate the whole yep. system <laughs> what was the name of that person uh shubin i'm quite sure it's neil shubin the mm -hmm. fish uh -huh. in the fish in us in dutch i think the fish in ourselves are okay. uh, something like that yeah. Yeah. so and then um we try to provide the data needed to interfere with the habit and so that's why um, I call it etudes, they have to study their body and this is based on the Russian program that was built for actors 100 years in Moscow mm -hmm. and then and th this was uh, influenced by the Chinese theater that came to Moscow uh -huh. And they, had, they were influenced by the shamans from Siberia. Oof. 
and so they didn't have uh, writing so they didn't have all this head stuff no but still this is the center of their body uh -huh, yeah. and so we have a to do this to to free yourself in a safe condition but and this are once more pictures by john appleton who will draw for me the six emotions of darwin so forward is anger backwards that's disgust i'm feeling down i'm glad i'm fearful or i'm in wonder there are only six directions but there are only six um emotions mm -hmm. basic mm -hmm. emotions so Some, uh, could i borrow that for a while and they are all connected to contraction and expanding then you yes. would say uh, have i got that right so the buddha is long wide and deep and he's wandering <laughs> he's wandering okay let's see here here we have that and the arrows you have on the right hand side shows the contraction the and the directions the, no, the direction that mm -hmm. the organism automatically let's not use the word chooses mm -hmm. but um is preparing itself for mm -hmm. to go to it's, it's the attitude maybe it's the say. attitude mm -hmm. okay, okay and everyone in my opinion is born with an attitude in one of these four ah, six directions ah, ah. and has learned from his uh, upbringing during his upbringing what not or what even more to do more mm -hmm. and so it's um, embodied until we get whatever age and then it becomes uh, our state of being. And these six emotions have an origin all the way back to Charles Darwin. Yes, yes, ah. yes, yes. It's uh, his most important book, I think, Expression of Emotion in Man and Animal. Mm -hmm. hmm. But not very well known, uh, hmm. sadly, sadly <laughs> enough. Ah. Hmm. So these are related to the Klein bottle, the internal data rather, and then you have René Hude, a Dutch philosopher, and to him there are spheres, and he says dying is not that difficult, everyone is able to do so. But he also said that living today is not that different from living in Greece, because it's just as um, it was at the Agora. Yes, the square, yeah. The square, meaning you can see the houses and then you will know there's someone who's living there privately. And then that's a shop. So in Dutch we use privé, privat. I don't know how to express it in, in English. Oh, okay. It's, uh, so rather family related or related to customers and so on, uh -huh. but also face to face. Uh -huh. And the third sphere was public, the market, the library and so on. Oh yeah. And the fourth was um, philosophical. And that's where they discussed the future. Mm. And every of these spheres had a training system. So religion was the train the training system for the family. You you learned not to kill your wife. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And not and to then, steal to keep yes. the society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, the um, let's say face to face, that's where sport was the important training factor. You learned to work together, you work what it was to be the first or the last and so on mm -hmm. and the training as, uh, factor for the uh, public was arts where wow. you learned what well, this is nice we will build uh, let's say all if i'm right if i'm not right correct me all houses are red are for the barn and so on and mm -hmm. yellow houses mm -hmm. that was a cultural yeah the better the okay. peasants yeah. and uh, patrons okay and then political that was science and philosophy was the training and i think that today four scenes are not enough anymore and so that's why i propose a fifth one post post industrial mm -hmm. since this sphere and especially in or after corona is quite different from before ah and so once more we have um the climb bottle we have now a few ways to understand what the person is always wanting to do mm. but is not allowed so he will strain himself since 
uh, Anselia, who first in 36 used the word stress, said in 40, I was wrong. It should, it should have be been strain. strain. And so everyone still uses the system, the concept of stress. So to me, there is a stressor that provides strain and if prolonged a stress reaction but the stress reaction on itself provides um more other stress more stresses of the same uh, quality or new stressors and once more that is a very easy way of once more explaining the climb bottle it's a circle and it's only the strain that can be changed Mm. Uh, in order to let's call it relax, to oh, relax yeah. not downwards but to expand in all mm. directions because we're expanded as astronauts. Yes, yes. When we use our type one muscle cells, and so the Buddha is long, mm. is glad, wide, wide. pride, uh -huh. and is deep, mm. meaning. I belong to it and have something to say mm -hmm. and then we provide the hormones and the neurotransmitters to feel well oh, okay okay and so if we fool ourselves to be long wide and deep <laughs> well what's the problem no that that would work and that brings me to to round the whole thing up uh, this very very interesting subject when it comes to left hemisphere and right hemisphere of, of the brain and the left as is as you might know connected to talking speech language language two dimensions two dimensional and it's in pieces it's in pieces. sequential sequential yep. uh, whereas uh, the right uh, hemisphere yeah. is like holistic three-dimensional three dimension also history um tails mm -hmm. and so normally the stream in our body should go from the body to the right hemisphere to the left yeah and then i'm feeling well yeah, yeah yeah and if i have to do something on my job because the boss told me so uh -huh. then it's the other way around yeah yeah and that comes with a cost ah there you go and here also you can see the problem with solving uh, burnout syndrome uh, with therapy because that includes speaking language and mm -hmm. that will stimulate the left hemisphere yes. and you will be locked into that sort of thinking yep. which is not holistic which it doesn't take the whole 3d picture yep. and has problem understanding direction what I thought or something like that well suppose you don't like your boss or the sphere on your work and you want to quit mm -hmm. but you have to earn your money oh yeah <laughs> so of course yeah yeah your, your body wants to turn around and say <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but you have to continue so that's a strain a permanent strain ah huh. so we could have a, a, a sort of in way going to uh, the system with the right brain and mm -hmm. the imagery yeah. uh, just a second yes. uh, uh, and thereby I think we could round the whole thing up yes and I thank say you. thank you to Jan Eiskens it's been very interesting uh, introducing us to uh, this just, just mm -hmm. one more thing mm -hmm. I coined it lately yes body so mm -hmm. burnout could be the feeling of being nobody ah. in the environment so yes body is to provide the as first thing using the client bottle the data coming up out of your body yes. the endogenous data and they have a very specific quality meaning they have a delay of 20 seconds uh -huh. whereas others only two seconds and so on and so if you prime yourself your body then it will lengthen widen and deepen yes and so go to the you ha don't have to, <laughs> to decide yes body be so be a yes body yes body dot be it's also in english in french and in dutch of course and you'll find the um, uh, a lot of stuff also all articles that have been published for my phd and a few more
Ah, very interesting. So I, I tried to add uh, the link for, for this site to the YouTube uh, page. And uh, I say thank you very much, Jan Eiskens, thank you very to much, uh, volunteering for this interview. Du is a duck. Thank you to you. Tack så hemskt mycket. Och jag tackar er som har lyssnat och tittat också. Okay.